So, uh, which brings me to the subpoena of a deposition. When you're subpoenaed uh, for a deposition, you must read the subpoena very carefully. There are different types of subpoenas and there are different types of depositions. So you have to read the subpoena. If the subpoena says uh, you must bring X, Y, and Z, then you must bring X, Y, and Z. Uh, if the subpoena has an attachment to it or exhibit attachment where the other side is asking for very specific information, read it very, very carefully. Uh, for example, if the subpoena says uh, to bring your college transcripts and you've, uh, you're an MD and you've been an MD for 25 years, you may or may not have your college transcripts. You may not have your MD transcripts. Uh, if uh, the subpoena says to bring your tax returns for the last two or three years and you determine you don't want to bring your tax returns, then you have to discuss that with the attorney that's done the hiring. Um, if, in fact, there are aspects of the subpoena that you do not feel you need to do or don't want to do or have a problem providing, you must explain that all to the attorney. Um, now, there are things the attorney can do. Uh, the attorney can file a motion to protect, which means that the attorney is going to ask the court to uh, not have you produce a certain document at a deposition. And that's what I would recommend you do. Um, if the attorney does not want to do that and you still have told the attorney uh, that you're not going to bring X, Y, and Z, uh, then I would put it in writing just so there's no misunderstanding. So when you get to the deposition, the two attorneys can decide how they want to handle that piece of information. If you have been subpoenaed uh, and it was legitimately served subpoena for you to testify, um, then you must testify. That's the point of the subpoena. The subpoena is to mandate by law that you appear for testimony. Also, all your fees should be paid, too. If they haven't been paid by the other side, which usually pays for the deposition, because usually the opposing side is the side that pays for the, uh, the time that you'll be putting in to render your opinions or uh, tell them your results or explain reports or whatever it may be, um, if you have not been paid, uh, then you do not have to appear. Uh, being paid is part of your retainer uh, agreement with the hiring attorney. If you haven't been paid, I would talk to the hiring attorney, explain that you're not going to appear, and let the hiring attorney decide how he or she wants to handle the payment of your fees so that you can move ahead with the deposition. So you do have some rights as an expert. Uh, attorneys understand the process. And by the way, this process is different in just about every state. Um, I've testified now or been retained in probably close to 300 litigations over the last, say, 25 years, and uh, probably in at least 30 states. And every state and jurisdiction is slightly different. And that's why you've got to ask all of these questions because testifying in Manhattan may not be the same as testifying in the middle of Iowa or in uh, you know, downtown LA. So um, there, there are lots of differences within the legal system uh, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Uh, if you're an expert who only testifies in one particular state or one particular area, then you usually feel comfortable, you know how it works, and you deal with the system. But if you're an expert that uh, testifies all over the country like I have done, uh, then it's kind of more interesting in a way to find out how uh, people or attorneys or jurisdictions in one part of the country ver work versus uh, uh, attorneys and jurisdictions and judges in courts in other parts of the country. So uh, I think that's important for you to understand. Um, once all this is worked out and you reviewed all of this information and uh, you're, you're ready then for the next phase or next part of this journey, this anatomy of a lawsuit, there may be documents that you still need. And that's when you call the attorney and you say, look, I've read uh, X, Y, and Z, but I need A, B, and C. Uh, can you please send out a request and get that? It might be a document. It might be a picture. It might be a form. It might be a manual. Um, it might be some kind of schematic of a building or a playing field or whatever it might be. Uh, that you still need. It might be something that was referred to in a previous deposition or document that the attorney forgot to send you. 
It's your job as a forensic expert to do everything you can to seek out as much information as you can uh, before you render your opinion. Um, so don't be afraid at all to ask an attorney for more documents if they exist. If they don't exist, they don't exist. Then you, uh, you go with what the evidence is that's been presented to you and that's the best that you can do.